All right, like, thank you for tuning in the channel today. Um, if you haven't had a chance, please hit that like and subscribe down in the bottom corner. Today, we're going to discuss the Mopar tire carrier. Um, I ordered the Mopar spare tire carrier. It comes in three part numbers. The first part we'll turn around is the support. The second part is an adapter piece that actually spaces it up about an inch. And then the third part is the light, which is the light I didn't use. So let me flip this camera around. We're going to discuss what we did. And then I've got a 37 135020 Toyo MT on the back, and we'll show you how it doesn't fit with the Mopar carrier. Okay, so one of the first things you're gonna do is remove your factory bolts out of your brackets here behind this, and then you're gonna install this reinforcement bracket. Um, I really like the Jeep OEM look, and that's the reason I chose to do the OEM bracket. Um, completely up to you. There's tons of other brands out there that you can do. Um, you know, for this one, it came out good. It looks good. The only thing that I'll say is if you look here at the bottom is I've dropped down a little bit here and that's my fault because I need to shim this up. So when I take this off, I'm going to shim it up and we're going to tighten those bolts and get this straight. Uh, the next thing is even though I'm a little low there, this is a 37, 1350, like I said, Toyo and, uh, you can tell it's rubbing right there on the bottom. If I open the gate, you'll see it drops down and then you have to slam the gate and it pops up and we're actually sitting on it right there. So a 37, 1350 will not clear if it's a true 37 like a Toyo. So we've got to do some modifications. Well, what I did on here is, the first part is I like the factory light better than the little light that goes on the lugs because I wanted to keep my center cap here. Um, this is a standard fuel center cap and the center pops out and you can take that out and actually stuck the old factory camera lock on here and, uh, gives it kind of a good look to me. Um, instead of having that, you know, the camera hanging off two lugs and then anyway, looks like too much. So what I did on the light was, is you just take these bolts loose and you have to take this rack apart and you move the wire to the inside, which gives you a little more room. And then you can lift that up and just put this in the bottom bolt and you don't use the bottom hole down here. You can see right there. And it's very sturdy. It works good like that. That picks it up. It does clear a 37 with that factory light. Now, the one thing that I've done is I've had to order another piece. So this, this reinforcement bracket comes in one part number. This bracket right here is what the other part number is. There's two of them. There's one on top and one on bottom down here and if you look there's about an inch lift on both of these now i got to looking online because you know i don't want to lift this tire up so high that you're blocking the whole back windshield you know i only need about half an inch and so i was looking for a bracket that had a little less you know something in that two to two and a half inch range because some of those brackets that you order have a four inch lift which is going to put that thing way up very high so um i'm gonna go get the box we're going to open this other bracket up and take a look at it and uh my plan is pull this tire off and we get that off and then we'll get this unbolted and we'll take a look at how that other bracket's going to mount on this plate okay so i ordered this bracket off of amazon like i said it had a little less lift than the other brands that were out there um it was an eag or something like that um we'll see if it's in here and so let's go ahead and, i just got this open get this thing unboxed real quick So we've got a hardware kit here with uh, bolts and nuts. We've got an instruction book here. I'm installing it, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then we actually have the bracket. So the fit and finish on the bracket, this is a really nice bracket. It's almost like a textured finish. Um, it did have a good finish in comparative to the reviews on others. On Amazon also um, said the bolt fitment was really good on this one um, where others said that they were off and they had to drill and, and, and route it out a little bit so anyway excited about getting this one on there let's go ahead and take a look at the measurement let's see what the actual lift is so I'm showing about a two and an eighth inch difference between the two holes so it should be a two and an eighth inch lift now I'm planning to remove the one inch lift that came from Mopar, that bracket, and use this. So really this is gonna be about an inch and an eighth higher, should be pretty close. 
but uh, I'm gonna get the spare tire off and get that uh, stuff off and then we'll get this held up there and see what it looks like. Okay, so now that I have the tire off, you can see a little bit better how the Mopar bracket lifts it up. So that's your stock bolt right back there. I have to turn this to up here. So that's the only lift you're doing with the Mopar bracket. And I think that was like a two, $300 part. So you're not getting a lot of lift, which you're paying for with that. You're getting the reinforcement you need here, but not enough lift here. So let me get that off and we'll see how the bracket bolts up. Okay, so I've got my gate shimmed up. I put some little shims under there. I got it up on the high side because I know it's going to sag a little bit. Um, you can see the body lines are pretty close. And uh, I torqued these. They're all good and tight by hand. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to install this plate. Now, I only have one hand to record and one hand to um, do work. So I'm just going to kind of show you all. These are the two factory shims that go on the back. So... I've got the eight factory bolts here because when I took my Mopar one off, they had longer bolts for that Mopar kit. I'm not gonna use that kit anymore. These are the factory shims. As you can see, they're gonna go on the gate just like this, which is the same thickness as this, so that way your tire carrier stays straight. And then we're gonna put the factory bolts back in and uh, get this bolted up. Let me do that real quick and then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our factory bolts that have the little Teflon washers, two and two here, and then two and two here. These are our new holes for the new bracket, which we have new hardware for. And if you look back here, you can see we use the factory shim there, like I said, and the factory shim on the bottom. That keeps this running straight along the back gate. Okay, so now that I've got the plate and everything in place, our fitment's really good. We've got a good gap here. It runs even across the other side. I did lift it a little bit higher on this side because the weight is going to pull it down some. Um, make sure your gate opens and closes well. And the next step is we'll just get the spare tire mounted. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, we got it mounted up. Look at the bottom right here. We've got maybe about three quarters of an inch clearance between the tire and the bumper, which is great. This is it from the side. So we're not touching anywhere there. And then we check the gate closure. Very nice gate closure. No drag, it opens and closes like it should. Okay, so we got the tire mount bolted on, everything bolted up great. We've got about three quarters of an inch under the tire on a 37 inch Toyo with that EAG mount off of Amazon. And uh, the gate doesn't seem to be sagging anymore. I got everything tightened up. I, like I said, when I installed it, I, I put a little bit of up tilt on it, torqued it down. And so when you put the tire on, it came down and it opens and closes uh, perfectly. That's great. One of the big benefits of doing the kit and getting it up, now I did a, this Jeep has 20 by 12s all the way around, but I did a 20 by 10 on the spare just because there's no reason for it to stick out so far on the back. And uh, one of the things you try to avoid is your backup sensors going off because those actually work well when they work. So I wanted to avoid messing that up. And uh, when we had it on before, the backup sensors would go off all the time and then shut off. And now I'm in reverse and I'm backing up and we don't have any backup sensor problems anymore. So this mount also corrected that problem. So if you can get that tire up a little bit, it helps get it out of that view of the sensor. And so it will fix the backup sensor problem also. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe. Don't forget, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.